first question is the most obvious one is how did you get started in your career? People can read, people can Google and stuff, but in your own words, how did you get started in your career in comms communication? Yeah, it's a really good question, Dom. So um, I think like most people, I went to school, um, obviously, obviously everyone goes to school. Then I, I went off to university. And when I was at university, I was one of those people, I think a lot of people who, who you may work with, who may be listening to this, they sort of either get to college or universities, don't really know what they want to do. So I studied economics and politics because I enjoyed those subjects and I was good at those subjects, but I didn't really want a career in either of those industries. Um, and what I did for a hobby when I, was a, when I was a student was I worked for the student newspaper. I worked for the student radio station. I had sort of my own show on the student radio station talking about talking about politics. And really, those opportunities just came to me because I asked for them because, I, you know, it was I wanted to get experience. I wanted to yeah. build my contacts. Um, and I just thought and I did think I'd like to be a journalist, but that's not for people like me. You know, my mum's not a journalist. My dad's not a journalist. My cousin's not a journalist. I don't know how to get into this. Um, and then I sort of, actually what then happened to me is a friend of mine left school, a friend of mine from school left school and didn't go to university. He went into journalism. So he'd already, he was on his career path already. Um, good guy called Jonathan, I hope is listening. Hi, John. Um, he was on that career path already and he'd actually worked his way up and was doing shifts at, on the Sun's website, which was a brand new thing at the time. And I thought, well, it, it, you know, if this guy can do it, I went to school, then I can do it. So after university, I was applying for jobs and I got a job work, love, very, very lucky and fortunate. It was the time when websites were just coming out. The Guardian had just done their website mm. and they needed someone. It wasn't a journalism job, but it was sort of what they called user help job. So my job was to, you know, basically someone called up, couldn't use the website to help them to monitor the talk boards. And I got to sit there and work, you know, I, my seat was next to all the news teams. So I got to watch them work and I decided, okay, this is it. I want to become a journalist. And by that point, I was very lucky. I had two sets of contacts. I had my friend that was already on the Sun's website and I had the people I knew on the Guardian's website. Um, so I went off and did my NCTJ in, in journalism. Then I went to, while I did that, I worked on my local paper, the Ilford Recorder, back in the day. Um, and it's all local papers and radio stations are great for getting experience. And I basically built myself up. And then when I started doing that, I was also... My friend at the Sun's website said, look, they, they need someone to come and help out. The girl that does showbiz, I think she was off sick or something, so I went and helped out. Um, then they sort of expanded the team, so I got a few more shifts. And then the woman that was doing it, her name's Jackie, she got poached by the paper to go and work on the paper, and she still works there today. And this opening came up to do the showbiz on the Sun's website. I got offered it. I couldn't say no. You know what? Oh, wow. What a fan yeah. yeah. What a fantastic job. So that's how I got into the media, really. Um, and I spent 10 years as a journalist before then transitioning into public relations and social media. Mm, absolutely. And obviously that we'll talk about your transition into public relations and social media in a minute. But um, I think one of the you know questions that you'll know, I ask this to most people now, because I think it's important, you know, with all this stuff that you've been able to do, you know, again, getting from from that start to everything you do now. Um, how do you define success and what is it, what does it mean to you as part of your career? Because, again, going from that, working the way up uh, to what you're doing now, you know, you've done a lot of really amazing things. So how how do you define success in your career? Yeah, that's really, that's a really good question. I think I've heard you ask it before. And it really makes people think. Um, and I wish I had thought before, <laughs> before we started chatting because I knew that was coming. Um, I think that in my early career, success, you know, wow, working on the Sun's website, that was success. Mm -hmm. Going up the ranks, I sort of moved up. I became sort of number two on the website. I then started writing for the paper and some... On some instances, I would edit the Papers Bazaar column, which is a very famous showbiz column. On some weekends, I would edit that because there was a rotor. And because I was a senior member of online staff, I actually got to do that. So that was like a big ambition of mine. I got to do it. Sometimes be careful what you wish for. It's very, very stressful and hard work doing that. I wouldn't, you know, the good people like Gordon Smart and Victoria Newton, who edited that every day, I don't know how they did it. You know, one day was a killer. But um, so those things sort of landmarks for me, really, you know, moving up, get, you know, in a way it's easy when you're journalist, getting good stories. You know, I always wanted to get store, you know, get a story onto page five, get a story onto page three, get a story onto the front page, those sort of things. Mm, mm. Um, which, which was that, um, now I do, do, you know, now it's more, now I've got kids like yourself. It's more about work-life balance, things like that. I sometimes consider success, you know, if at the end of the day I can switch off, mm. sometimes even that can be a success to the smaller things. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think that's it. You know, you've achieved a lot and it's and it's about taking stock. I think a lot of the young people we work with, they think, oh, I've got to be, I've got to be like, you know, like I said, I've got to be like Sam and I've got to have my own agency. You know, I've got to employ people. I've got to do all that. But actually, there's a there's a, there's a step ladder up to that. And it's every, t- what I'm hearing is it's taking, you know, taking a step at a time and not overwhelm, yeah. overwhelming yourself. Exactly. And it's all about a step at a time. And it's all about sort of knowing what your ambitions are. I remember, so my friend who I told you about, um, mm. who got me the shifts at the sun, I remember we sat there one day and said, wouldn't it be great if one day we'd edit or a deputy edit of the sun? But by the time we left there, that was like the last thing we ever wanted to do. We saw sort of the stress. Those guys are under the outside mm. pressures, the internal pressures, and thought that's actually a job that I never want to do, which is why, as I know, we'll talk about, I did go off and create my own agency. So it's about redefining success. You know, the things that you dream about when you're 20 aren't necessarily what you want when you're 40. Yeah, absolutely. And enjoy every moment. You know, mm. I look back at the times at the sun, you know, I got to go to all the music festivals, all the film premieres, got to do some amazing stuff. I was speaking to someone the other day from those days and they were saying, John, do you remember when we did this? Do you remember when we did that? And I'm thinking now I wish I'd lived in the moment and enjoyed it a bit more because, you know, they were amazing things that not many people get to experience. So whatever you're doing, just really enjoy it, live in the moment. Even if, you know, I still think about sometimes when I was work- when I was trying to get my foot on the ladder, I was working a part-time job in Sainsbury's, but those were some of the fun- most fun days that I had, you know, just messing about with the guys and girls there, going for drinks after work. So just enjoy whatever you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned that transition then from, uh, from again, journalism to, to PR, to, uh, you know, to get to setting up your own agency. What was it, what told me, told me about the challenges of doing that and making that transition? Because a lot of people go from journalism to PR uh, and, and some people I know do the reverse, but not as many. Um, so talk me through the transition and, and what it was like going from, you know, journalism to PR and, and setting up your own thing as well. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question as well. And it is, you do tend to find a lot of people. I mean, it's funnily enough, we sort of, I had a look on LinkedIn the other day and a lot of people I used to work with at the sun and I would say at least 50% of them are now doing some sort of PR. Yeah. Um, and really the transition wasn't that hard because I was always on the receiving end of PRs pitching to me, as I'm sure you are, Dom. You know, a lot of, a lot of journalism now is sort of getting press releases, getting PRs call you up, set up interviews. So I saw... I saw the other side of things. Um, one of the things that I do that I know sort of your listeners know about is professional wrestling. Um, I wrote about that for the Sun, so I got to witness. You know, the WWE had some amazing PR people. Impact Wrestling, who I now represent, had a couple of really good PR people, Stephen Chris, and I would be on their PR tours. I would be around, and because I was quite a senior journalist, they would sort of confide in me how they worked, and it was, you know, watching those people work. Then I knew what to do. Mm. Um, the other thing that stands me in really good stead, actually, is because I was a journalist, when I write press releases, when I pitch things, I pitch them with a journalist hat on. So I know, and a lot of people have said to me, you know, we, we know that when we get a press release from you, when we get a story from you, it's good to go because you've written it as a journalist. You know what we want. And that can be hard for clients sometimes because they often want all the corporate bump in there. But unfortunately, again, now I'm at senior enough position where I can say to them, look, that this is the story that will go in. So let's just do it this way and save ourselves a lot of time. So, you know, I, I do know, and I really appreciate that a lot of journalists work, like working with me. And how I got that is I knew which PRs I like working with, which ones I didn't particularly like working with, um, and the reasons why. And I tried to act like the ones that I did like working with. And I think that stood mm. me in good stead. So, um, yeah, because the industries are quite well related, if I'd gone, tried to go from journalism into plumbing, that might have been a lot more difficult. But because they're, they're pretty well related and I already had some good contacts, um, it was a it was an easier transition than many could have been. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and obviously, you know, before we talk about your work, you know, in wrestling, um, not everybody gets to do what they love as part of a job. You know, you're, you're not only doing wrestling stuff, you also work in faith, you do social justice work as well. So you work on projects that you're really passionate about. Tell us about, again, the, you know, what that was like to not only go into a, you know, make a transition into PR, but also setting up your own agency and doing stuff that you're passionate about because you're a wrestling fan. You're obviously, you, you work with causes that you that you enjoy and you're passionate about. What was that like? You know, because again, you know, not everybody gets to do that. Yeah, I am very proud. Thank you, Don. I mean, actually doing this chat does make me sort of smile and give me a glow inside because I am very, I am very fortunate, you know. And um, I mean, part, part of it was that the wrestling thing came along as my first client, mm. you know, 
I knew, and this is, you know, the advice I always give people is, um, I mean, it's pretty obvious advice, but not everyone follows it, is like before setting up on your own, make sure that you've got um, a client there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I knew that I wasn't just going to give up this job at the Sun, which was, you know, by the time I said I left, I was quite it was a senior position. I had a mortgage. I had kids. I wasn't just going to give that up um, for nothing. So I was lucky. I got to know Impact Wrestling very well. I got to be friendly with Steve and Chris, who were the PR team there, as well as Dixie Carter, who's fantastic. Mm. He's still a good friend of mine to this day. Um, and I said, and literally I pitched to them and I said, look, what, what's happened is you've got, I'm writing about you for the sun here because, you know, we're a big media. I've reached out, I've got to Stephen, but these guys are just so busy dealing with the U S there's this paper. Like I reeled off sort of 10 different papers and websites they could get coverage on without, but they couldn't do it because they just didn't have someone on the ground. I said, look, make me your guy on the ground and let's see how it goes. Um, funny enough, by the time I was doing this, um, Jonathan, who's the guy that first introduced me to journalism and got me that work at the sun, he'd done something similar set up on his own. So <coughs> we did a deal that he helped me out with the, with the TNA now called impact stuff. And I helped him out with a couple of his bits so that we both had some sort of fallback there. And they sort of gave us a three month trial. The first person they sent over was Rick Flair, the nature boy, you know, you can't ask for better to be on trial and get sent no. one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. It yeah. was, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that hard work. We had him on talk sport. We had him obviously in the sun. Cause I was still there in the star in the mirror everywhere. Um, they were really happy with it. And from then, you know, it's still there to this day, 10, 10 years later. And having that one client and that base and no one had the income then gave me the ability to sort of pick and choose other stuff that I did. So when other work came in, if it was something that I was interested in, then I could, go ahead and do it i mean sometimes i do stuff that i'm not passionate about mm. because it looks like an interesting opportunity mm. or you know it's a well, being offered a good a good salary for a one-off job but generally all my retained clients are things that i'm passionate about that i enjoy doing because i figure i mean i think it's very similar to you i always get the impression that whenever we speak you're so passionate about what you do and it does you know it doesn't make it feel like a job mm. it makes mm -hmm. it feel yeah and, yeah. and when when things come off, when I see my clients in print, because I'm also passionate about them, it gives me that extra buzz. Mm, absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, you know, you've worked with some amazing names, you know, uh, not just in wrestling uh, over the years. Tell me about some of your favorite experiences. You know, obviously you've worked with in a wrestling level, Kurt Angle, Ric Flair. Uh, I've got a weird story with Ric Flair where he couldn't understand my my Yorkshire accent when we when we spoke for a while <laughs> on the on the phone. Uh, but yeah, tell me about some of your favorite experiences, stuff that when you finish up, you know you're going to be like, I can't, you know, that's amazing. I, either you because you obviously create opportunities for other people. Uh, you know, you gave us our start in wrestling, a lot of other people as well. Uh, but you but talk about yourself. You know, what have been some of the memories that you will really cherish and really you know remember for the rest of your life? So there's a few. Um, Kurt Angle, who you've mentioned, is was always my favourite wrestler when I was watching it. Mm. And um, I got to become very good friends with him through Impact Wrestling. Um, he would always come on tours. I'd know him well. Um, absolutely randomly, I managed to get um, a contact with One Direction. And <laughs> Kurt went and did this really cool thing with One Direction. Yeah. You guys can look it up. Yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> and um, then I got him and his daughter sort of tickets for One Direction and... Um, so it's just really nice. We'd always chat away. And then he got to come over to the UK and we did like a media tour and we did London. We did um, Manchester. So it was basically me and Kurt Angle on the road for like four or five days, chatting away. Worked out we had so much in common in the way that our lives have been and our views mm. on things. And it was just absolutely amazing just to have that friendship with someone that was an idol of mine. Going out for dinner with Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff as a wrestling fan. And it was really funny because they'd um, we'd done a day of interviews that day and what's really interesting is people think oh you know do the wrestlers really like being doing all these interviews but they do they love it because most of the people like like yourself don't they ask them about wrestling about what they're passionate about mm. um so we went out and the hulk had just and eric had just done a day of interviews and they were talking about some of the questions they got asked they go oh yeah you remember that guy that asked about the warrior and then they tell this great story about the ultimate warrior while we're out having dinner and that was as a wrestling fan that was amazing um Another career high is this incredible guy that everyone should um, Google. His name's Nissin Black. He was a, grew up in Detroit, I think it was, and he was like a gangster rapper. And he's, his story's horrific. Um, you know, from being a kid with family, with drugs and with death mm. and with abuse. Um, he watched his best friend die all this. And he decided, I'm going to change my life. Mm. And he converted to Orthodox Judaism. 
Oh, okay. um, so you can imagine this big gangster rapper from Detroit is now living in Jerusalem as an Orthodox Jew, but still rapping. But now he raps about nice things. And he came over and did a media tour, on, you know, BBC featured him. We got him in the Guardian, all of that sort of stuff. So that was that. Was, and then I got to go to one of his gigs and that was really nice. So just, yeah, a lot of those sort of success stories. I've just meeting really, really interesting people. Um, Taryn Terrell, we and her got to go to France, which was incredible. Um, she was doing media in France and the guys that uh, were entertaining us um, were the French commentary team from Impact and they knew all the best restaurants to go to, all the best wine to drink. So that was just a, another fantastic experience, just getting to hang out with people, chatting and resting, drinking good wine. It was brilliant. Oh, amazing, man. It's lovely to hear about those, mm. those experiences and how you know, you've helped people out, but also, you know, sharing sharing lovely experiences with the likes of Hulk Hogan, Bischoff there, going to France, drinking wine. It's the, <laughs> it's the dream. It's the yeah. dream, man. You live, you live in the dream. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, just asking you, know, what kind of things do you want to see from a platform, you know, like ourselves, we got our start in wrestling through you, uh, you know, when somebody comes to you, maybe they've heard this or maybe they've seen some of the work you've done. And they go, oh, man, I want to work with Simon. I want to drop drop him that email. I want some impact wrestling talent on my website or my platform. What what key things do you need to see from somebody to, to allow them that access to, to yeah. your wrestlers, your performers? Definitely. Well, first off, please do email. You know, the worst that can happen is we say no or not yet. So please mm. do. I mean, that's the first thing. You know, Dom, we're probably, you're probably one of the people I've been working with the longest. You know, we've been working together a long time. And I'm sure that was it. I'm sure just one day you emailed me on spec, um, told me a bit about your website, you know. And at first it was probably just, you know, a quick, why don't you join a conference call and ask one question or here's a yeah. press release, let me see what you do with it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you do a good job with that. And then we step up. And now I know that, you know, if I'm putting the talent in front of you, no matter whether it's our world champion or a junior talent, you're going to do a good interview. You're going to be respectful. You know, it's going to be entertaining. And I think that's the sort of thing that I want to see. Um, obviously, wrestling is a very, very popular thing. So we do get a lot of requests. Mm. But we try and, you know, every so often, especially in the lead up to our big events, we have a thing called a press pass, which is a big yeah. Zoom call. We have Joan there, you've done them. We have journalists from around the world on them. And everyone gets to ask a question. And, you know, and we'll watch that. And if someone carries themselves well and looks like they've got a good platform, etc then we'll we'll do more with them obviously it, there is a bit of a chicken and egg to it the the larger number of interviews go to the sort of places who have the most followers or the most people watching and how do you get more followers or people watching without the contents so there is there is that chicken and egg side to it but what i would say is build build something first mm -hmm. you know maybe do something with local indie wrestlers local other sports people try and build up so that when you first approach impact or maybe wwe or AEW or whoever you want on your show you've got a body of work to show them you know if you've got a twitter account or instagram try and build it up so it's got a decent following because mm -hmm. we you know if someone emails us and you know they've only got 20 followers on twitter then it's much harder for me to be able to go to my bosses and place an interview with them so just really build up and then you know even if the opportunity you get at first isn't great even if it is just you know, one question on a press pass, just do it, do your best, sort of impress us. The other thing you may want to do is, I know a lot of the bigger places, um, Talk Sport, Metro, The Sun, et cetera, all have, all have wrestling coverage. So you may want to speak to one of them, see if you can get some work experience on one of them. You know, often, you know, sadly, a lot of this work experience is for free. It's not paid, but get your name out there, get your foot in the door, um, get your name. You know, some people I work with are because, you know, they worked at one of these big places, so they got they got their foot in the door that way, and then they've struck out on their own. But I know they're good, I know they're talented. Mm. But yeah, there's a few things we look for. One is that it's going to be the coverage is going to be there, people are going to see it, it's going to make new people aware of impact wrestling. One is that um the chat's going to be good and respectful. And the third one is that it's going to be entertaining, the talent's going to enjoy it. You know, I know if I put a talent with you, they're going to enjoy it. You're going to ask some interesting questions. So that's also what I'm looking for. There's um yeah, there's a couple of people that I know that, you know, if I'm doing a, a talent road type thing, if I put this one on, I know they're going to enjoy this interview. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. And I think one of the things that I, I like to do, um, and it's a little bit more of a difficult question, you know, because a lot of times, you know, this, this is all really positive stuff and, and I appreciate it, uh, you know, speaking to you, getting your thoughts. But, you know, talk about mistakes now that you have either you have made or you've seen other people make. Cause I think mistakes get glossed over a little bit. So in terms of, you know, any mistakes you've seen, you know, sort of not cautionary tales, but things that people should avoid doing 
you know, I think can be useful in this context as well. So, you know, can you talk about any mistakes either, you, either yourself has made in your career or you've seen other people make that may, maybe for, you know, any anybody that's listening to this to avoid doing, uh, you know, when they're trying to pitch, when they're trying to get these big jobs, trying to get these interviews, um, any kind of things to avoid doing that you've seen? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely made mistakes in my career. I think that, you know, sometimes it's been maybe a bit too bullshit. When you work somewhere like The Sun, you can give you a little sense of entitlement. I like the thing, I'm not like that, but I probably think at the time you can yeah. get that sort of that type of thing. And I think that's it. I think, like, you've got to remember, the, like, you're not real, you know, no one's entitled to anything, you know, you've got to work hard at it. And I think sometimes that's a mistake I've made. Um, I think the sort of thing we did earlier, sometimes people pitch too quickly. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people come to me when they haven't built anything and they have got 20 followers on Twitter and then it's, then it's much harder. And then when they come again, they've built it up. You still remember them as the person that you didn't think was that great. So I think that's good. I think make sure you have a solid base, always be prepared for what questions you're going to get back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the other thing is, I think one of the mistakes we've made is I think always remember sort of it's something like impact. If with, let's talk specifically about wrestling, but you could yeah. to put this to any sort of celebrities or sport, is that you know the way all wrestling companies will work is that on a set day and set time, there'll be a talent available. And you'll know that I'll come to you and say, Dom, next Tuesday at mm -hmm. A very specific at 7 30 p.m i've got this talent are you around and you know most of the time you're on if you're not we'll wait till next week but i do get some people email me and say can you get me world champion moose next tuesday at this time and it's like it doesn't really work like yeah. that mm. you know you've got to you know unless it you know if it was bbc one then maybe but you know for, for everyone else it's like you've got to fit in with us more so i think that is for the one mistake and that does put me off a bit when i get an email rather than just saying hey look i'd love to chat to moose can you mm. let me know when he's available? I get very specific times and dates and I just can't do it. I just, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I think that is a mistake. Absolutely. Mm. I think it's good to get some of this stuff out because again, people, people make mistakes and then they think they, you know, there's these terms that come up like blacklisted and all this other stuff. And they think their career is over and all this stuff. And I think, you know, it's important to get some of these lessons in now so that, so that perhaps, you know, those mistakes either don't happen or, you know, you realise you can make mistakes, but maybe there's a bit more work to be done, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the things that we get is, you know, there'll be, you know, we'll be pro trying to promote, let's say, <coughs> Bound for Glory is coming up. Mm -hmm. We'll do an interview to promote Bound for Glory and the person doesn't really happen because I know the journey so well. And part of my job is to make sure this doesn't happen. But I know it's happened to colleagues where the journalist then doesn't even ask about bound for glory ask them about wwe or aew mm. or something like mm. that so that's a that's a big mistake but mm. no one really gets backlisted but <coughs> but certainly when i'm drawing up a schedule i prefer to work with people i know and trust yeah absolutely and that mm. makes that makes a lot of sense i think you know four or five questions left now i think it'd be really useful to get your uh, you know pr comms perspective as well because pr is a very you know a great, a great industry to get into you know again key skills now um, you know, what things do you need? Because you mentioned being a little bit bullshit, being a little bit confident there, but also people skills. You ask me, for example, when we chat, you, you, you know, and I know that you actually legitimately care. You know, you, you will have a little chat at the beginning of, of interviews or we'll talk over email. These are skills that you can't teach or very rarely can you teach the type of skills yeah. that you have that mean that, you know, I want to work with you. I'm not nervous when I come to an interview because I know, you know, or, or, or you know, you, you're very reassuring to people and you can't, you can't necessarily teach that. So what key skills do you need from a PR comms perspective for anybody that's interested in getting in that industry? What key skills would yeah. somebody need? I think you you genuinely need to be interested in people and mm. I don't think you can fake that. Um, mm. And I don't think you can learn that. So I think it's like, I think it's really, really important that you're that sort of person. If you're not, if you're quite sort of, introverted not interested in people then maybe prs and pr on comms isn't isn't the one for you i think that because i'm lucky i'm passionate about what i do most you know and most journeys are most people because what i do is quite niche mm. i decided i didn't want to go down the the corporate route of doing pr for baked beans or lg tvs or whatever i decided i want to go down these things so generally most people who want to interview moose or mickey james or whoever are wrestling fans mm -hmm. most people that want to talk to um my clients that in the social justice or charity spheres are interested in those in those topics in those campaigns in things like maybe same-sex marriage or living wage or other campaigns that i've worked on mm. so immediately you've got something in common and immediately friendships form 
you know so i always say that when we used to have the tna uk tours other than obviously seeing seeing the wrestlers and the um and the staff that i hadn't seen each year my other favorite thing was seeing all the journos you mm-hmm. know i'll spend time at the shows going and sit with people catching up with them seeing how they're doing so i think that's really important is to have people skills i think it's really important to be i mean obviously knowing how to write knowing how to write a press release mm-hmm. knowing what makes a story i mean the key thing and this is something you can learn is knowing what makes a story yes yeah absolutely that is a hundred percent the whole thing of pr you know is knowing what makes a story and what you know what makes a story for a website like Soundsphere? What makes a story for a wrestling website, a dedicated wrestling website, would be very different? And what means that I can get my story to cross over somewhere like Metro or the Daily Mirror is very different again. So yeah. yeah, you have to know that. You have to know your market. And that a lot of that comes from experience. You know, mm-hmm. um, have I made? Yeah, one of the mistakes that I've made sometimes is early in my career, not knowing what a story was. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, and maybe missing something or maybe working too hard. Or I've seen other people make the mistake of they think they've got something that they haven't and they'll work hard on it, overpromise. Mm. Um, that's the other thing with PR. Never overpromise your clients because, you know, I would like to work on giving my clients as long as possible. I have s- seen people, and we've all had it, we pitch for a project, they go with someone else who's promised them the world and then six months later they'll come back to me or couple of friends of mine that are in the same sort of sphere and say oh actually they didn't deliver what they said we should have gone with you in the first place so mm. you know mm. that's it just know your just knowing knowing your market knowing your clients knowing the media landscape it's all really important and it all comes with experience and um if you're just starting out in this game then you know there are lots of big pr firms and not just in london all around the country that i'm sure people can get work experience with um and like i say although i never had that because I was a journalist for 10 years, I sort of got work experience seeing how seeing how they all worked. Yeah, absolutely. I think that work experience you had in the beginning there is, is incredibly valuable mm. as well. And again, the people skills there. Um, that last one of our, our, our deep questions before we do the uh, the PR and plugging bit and a little mm. bit more about yeah. yourself. You know, in terms of the biggest lesson you've learned about yourself from the beginning of your career and who you were when you were doing that work experience, when you had that, you know, those, those jobs at the sun and, you know, the confidence to go get those interviews to who you are now, again, supporting emerging platforms and, and clients to, to build their brand. What's the biggest lesson you've learned about yourself through your work? Oh, that's a, that's a, that is interesting. I mean, the biggest lessons I've learned generally are always work hard, mm-hmm. always be nice to people. There's a poster, isn't there? Work hard and be nice to people. And that, that's it. That's just my advice to anyone, you know, because most of my, most of my business comes from referrals. Mm-hmm. People that I've worked with before say, oh, I need someone to do PR and comms. Let's give Simon a call. I've worked with them in another thing because, you know, I always think that when I work with people, I do my best. Mm-hmm. You know, I do a good job. I never overpromise. I always try and over deliver. Yeah. Those sort of things. What have I learned about myself? Hmm. Maybe I think I've learned about myself that I'm prepared to put in the hours. You know, I don't want to coast. I want to, you know, I, I want to make sure the job gets done. And I think people appreciate that. Sometimes I probably put in too much. You know, it's Sunday our, it's Sunday afternoon. And before we're doing this, I was catching up with emails. So maybe I shouldn't have been doing that. Maybe I should have been relaxing, watching a watching a film with the kids or something rather than sitting upstairs <laughs> doing, doing emails or whatever. But, you know, I think the hard work's paid off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you're yeah. learning as well. You're learning that reflection, you know, means that you might go and watch a film later on and have a bit of a chill. You know what I mean? So I probably will. Probably. They, well, I'm making sure I'm done by the Strictly Come Dancing results because that's something that we all want to. Then we're texting yeah. Nana and everything to find, find their way for one thing. So I think Reese is my favourite, but I think he's going to go today. Although yeah. by the time this goes out, he's probably already gone, I think. Well, we'll, we'll see what yeah. happens. <laughs> I mean, that, that was my next question. You know, what are your passions outside of work? You know, talking about your family, you know, on your website, obviously talks about all your accomplishments, but also that you're a very proud you know dad and you you've got uh, you know family roots there but you're also you've got other interests too so uh, you're an arsenal fan for example so what what um tell me about your passions and things that inspire you outside of a work environment yeah i mean football's football's the big one massive arsenal fan um season ticket holder so you know good we've we have had a couple of good wins and a couple of bad losses this season so it's been interesting it's been up and down being at the emirates this year yeah um that's yeah I mean those are the things really family football well I mean wrestling so I'm very lucky that I work in what my passion is Mm, mm. um just sort of yeah and being being with friends being with family that sort of thing as I've got older sort of the old days of 
passions being going out clubbing and stuff has turned into zoom well especially with the pandemic zoom calls and cards yeah. nights and things like that but yeah yeah absolutely I, absolutely i think that's i think that's lovely and you know one of the things that we you know i, I should have asked earlier but i'd, I'd kind of almost forgotten mm. to ask it is where does your passion for wrestling come from tell me take me back to your oh, first yeah where, where where did where did your passion for wrestling start take me back to your first interaction with wrestling and, and what fueled you because you've been doing this for a long time man so what's yeah. kept the passion going that's really interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. So my passions have always been really football, wrestling, movies and music. I've always been massively into my music. I mean, part of the reason I wanted to work with you guys is because I love sounds for as a site. I think a lot of the bands you cover are great. One of the other early guys that I worked with worked for a website, a guy called Satfri. I don't know if you've ever met him on any of our tours. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, we, he, yeah. Went to, he went to Hull Uni and uh, we actually met yeah. uh, about talking about music and stuff because he used to run Oh, music. wow. Yeah, yeah so that's we met, it. We met at Hull Uni and then he... Um, and then he obviously he went off to do his thing, and uh, it's, it's a, yeah. we, we do keep in touch. Yeah, he's oh, managed, awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's now managing he's a, a great band called Tigress as well. That's so right. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, he yeah. Well, yeah, but he doesn't do the amplified site anymore, which was a great site as well. Yeah, but, it was. I mean, yeah. the other thing, yeah, the other thing I love working with actually, to go back to a previous question, is obviously I love doing stuff with wrestling sites, but I really enjoy doing things with sites that aren't about wrestling so our wrestlers can reach new audiences mm. so that's why i love working with sound sphere that's why i love working with amplified so i love working with those sort of things so if you are a site i mean and there are things like movies cult websites sci-fi music that do sort of cross over into wrestling let's get one of our wrestlers on whether they talk about that or whether they talk about wrestling and it's a nice way for us to reach out to new audiences we're always looking to do that yeah, yeah. Where my passion start? Yeah. Go on. Yeah, tell me through your way. Where, where did your passion start? Like, like, what, what was the first match you saw, and, and what, what, you know, what, what do you go back to if you, you know, if you need a bit of motivation? What, what matches do you yeah. go back to? Talk me through the very, you know, the very first uh, kind of uh, genesis of your, of your yeah, wrestling okay. passion. So I remember when I was like eleven, I was going to a new school as you should do, going to secondary school, and um, I didn't know anyone there. My mum and dad knew of another family. They said you know, have a play date. I don't know what that would call this. They go and play this guy, this kid Lee. And this kid Lee loved wrestling. And I'd not really heard of it that much before. And he put it on, I remember it was Demolition and I was just blown away. And then we would do our own wrestling. So I started loving it there. And then we never had Sky. So if Lee or one of my friends would take the WWF stuff, I'd watch it. But the one thing we did have was WCW Worldwide on ITV. Yeah, yeah, and Johnny yeah. B. Bad. Like Johnny B. Bad was my favourite growing up. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Um, Sting, Big Fan Vader, they're all on it. Um, so I'd watch that with my dad. My dad took me to the tours. So um, I loved it as a kid, just all the colour and the storylines. Um, I remember Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 6 being really big and watching that with friends. Yeah. Then yeah. I got to uni and it coincided with the Attitude Era. Yeah. And again, a housemate said to me, oh, I love wrestling. Let's put it on because we had Sky. And I was a bit like, oh, I, I used to like it when I was a kid. Let's give it another go. And it was that was the era of Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, The Undertaker. I mean, I watched a clip from it the other day and I was still blown away. It was just the best. Um, yeah. So the Mate. Attitude Era for me. And then from there, I was just hooked. And I just became this massive wrestling fan. And when I got to the sun and start, um, I said, look, no one writes about wrestling here. Can I do a wrestling column? And then that just sustained it. Now I'm 43 years old. Would I still be a huge wrestling fan today if I hadn't spent the last sort of 10 to 12 years writing about it? I don't know. Things come along. You know, some of the things I was passionate about 10 years ago, I'm not. But because I'm in the industry and I love it, I am. I'm obviously a massive Impact fan. Yes. Um, I love, yeah, I love it, man. Love yeah. it. I love Impact. Yeah. You know, yeah, I think... Uh, it is amazing, you know, one of the things, that, and you've been a huge part of this, a lot of stars have launched their careers in Impact, a lot of stars have reinvigorated their careers with Impact Wrestling, and I think that, you know, more and more people now uh, are starting to 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 re-fall in love with Impact Wrestling, and you've been a huge part of that, man, if, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful time for rest, to be a wrestling fan, I think. Yeah, no, I think so. I was a, can I swear on this or not? Yeah, but, it, well, you can do. It's okay. Don't worry. We're you okay. You might leave it out. Okay, because I'm quoting someone. So I was doing an interview with, with Moose the other day. Yeah. Um, Karen, I think you were speaking to. I think you were speaking to Metro. It was one of these Zoom ones. Love, um, I love Alistair, man. He's, he's great. Yeah, Alistair. Alistair yeah, yeah. yeah. Was, I'm pretty sure it was Alistair. It was 100. Yeah. percent It was Alistair yeah. at Metro. He's great. Love him. We were, oddly enough, there's another. Story. Like, I went. I went to yeah. UCLan and did my masters, and he's a graduate from UCLan. So. Oh wow. So we 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 sort of crossed over there. We've actually done an interview with him as well about his uh, great 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 talent. Anyway, so you were saying about Alistair's yeah. interview with Moose. Yeah. 
Moose, yeah. Um, but I'll just put Alistair over. He's a great guy. I was going to say yeah. he'd be really good for this interview because, yeah, again, I've been working with him for years. Again, he's someone who reached out to me, I think, when he was on the Manchester Evening News and did stuff. Mm -hmm. And now he's worked for the Mirror, Bank of Showbiz, now he's working at Metro and still. You now, that's why contacts are so important. Yeah, he's great. Um, so he's doing an interview with Moose and he's like asking Moose about when he joined TNA as it was. And he said, oh, yeah, it was a Moose said it was a real shit show then. And I was like, oh, yeah, it was. But I was I was still working there, Moose. It wasn't that bad. But yeah, hey, yeah. A lot of the, yeah. Because I've yeah. been there so long, I've seen all the ups and the downs. I mean, it's never, it's one of those things, it's never as bad as everyone says it was, and it's probably never as good as everyone says it was. It's always, you know, people can, wrestling fans especially, can either think hey, it's something that's the best thing since sliced bread, and you are having that a bit now as you see the people's reactions to AEW, or it's the worst thing ever, as you see sometimes now with people's reactions to WWE, or the reactions to TNA as it was a few years ago. And actually, probably the truth is it's somewhere in between, but Impact is on a very, very good position now. Mm. Scott Demore. And Ed, yeah, Lord Home have done an incredible job. Um, absolutely. I mean, Don Callis was a big part of that. He's now not with us anymore, but he was a big part of that. Gal Kim behind the scenes, Dilo yeah. Brown behind the scenes. Everything feels like it's in a really, really good place at the moment. I'm so proud to be working for them. Yeah, I'm excited for the future of yourself, and I'm excited for the future of Impact. And and now we get to do the press and plugging bit for you, mate. So, oh, nice. uh, yeah. So, so tell me, because obviously, you know, your career is not just about wrestling. You know, uh, you obviously you're working with Impact currently. You've got other things in the pipeline. What can you tell me? I love, I love doing this question because it, it, it relates across the board, whether you're speaking to a talent or a, or, or someone like yourself or representative. Because you can't tell me everything, but what can you tell me about what you're working on at the moment and what you'd like to plug? Yeah, okay. So really what I want to plug is just sort of my business. Um, it's called SRX Consultancy. Um, you can just srxconsultancy.com or you can just type in my name, Simon Rothstein, into Google. You'll find me. Please get in touch if you're like, a, you know, if you've got a website that covers any of the things we've spoken about today. I'd love to sort of place stories with you, um, do PR with you, find us on social media, give us a follow. I want, I need some more Instagram follows. You know, we've only just set it up. So I need to get the Instagram going a bit more. So please do. Yeah, we were a social media. That's the thing. One of the things, I, one of the lessons I think I've learned is sometimes you're so busy promoting other people, you forget to promote yourself. Yeah, yeah. So we were social, we were running Instagram accounts for, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers for all these clients. And we didn't even have one ourselves. So, you know, that is a, that is the thing. Always remember to work on yourself as well, whether that, working on your business, working on promotion and stuff, working on your own mental health, anything like that's really, really important to take time for. Um, you know, please keep supporting Impact Wrestling. That's big coming up to the end of the year. Um, have a look at some of the social action stuff I've done. I've just done this thing called Mitzvah Day, which was yeah. great. It's a big interfaith day of social action. So people of all faiths and none come together, do good deeds for others. It's really nice because... Beautiful. Yeah, it's really nice because generally you can keep in your own bubble, whether it's your own faith group or your own friendship group. But what this does is it you meet different people. I met so many different people, um, you know, Muslims, Christians, Hindus, other Jews doing mitzvah day this year. And it was amazing. We did some great. We planted trees. We made soup for the homeless. We did all these different things. So I check that out because it's something I'd love people to get involved in next year. It's so much fun. It takes place all, all around the country. I don't think we've had anything in Hull actually this year, so I might hit you up to do a project up there next year. There, there you go, man. Anywhere in you, we work across the whole of Yorkshire, mate. So absolutely, oh, lovely. anywhere you want to go, we, we'll probably again, you know how it works. We probably know somebody that knows somebody, so yeah. we can figure something out. I'd love yeah. to get love to get involved in something like that, man. Absolutely, yeah. you know people in York that would be interested cool. in that leads as well. Um, so yeah, fantastic, mate. I, I'm gonna, you know, like I said, gonna do my own research into that um, after this because it sounds fantastic. And um, and just to finish off then what is your message because you've brought people from all over the world for these media calls for years you've brought people from all over you've created stories with world-renowned publications you know your fight folds your metro sun mirror what is your message to uh, i was gonna i'm not gonna put myself over but sounds fair as well you know i i, I like to, i like to think we're all right i like to think we're okay um but yeah like what is your message then for all the publications that have supported you and all the uh all the people the journalists that have, that have you know that have um you know either play placed a story with you works with works with you in whatever way you know and, and, and the people that are that will continue to support you going forward. So all the journalists you've met and all the journalists you've yet to meet and people that might get involved with you. Yeah, I mean, it sounds a bit cheesy, but really I'm only here because of the journalists that I work with and the talent I work with. If no one was running my stories or was interested in the people that I PR, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing it. So just a big thank you. I mean, I would say that 99% of the people I've worked with have been fantastic. 
you know, most of them become friends, you know, there's people that sometimes, you know, sadly, they don't work in the industry for a few years, they drop off, then they come back, hey, I've set up a new podcast, and it's like, it's like rekindling with an old friend, it's brilliant, so, you know, if we've lost touch, please get back in touch, because I do like knowing what people are up to, because um, I think even, we probably dropped out of touch for a couple of years, I yeah. think, Dom, and then, yeah. then you got back in touch, I was like, yeah, sounds things back, awesome, yeah, man. Man. I miss those guys, yeah, yeah so that's it, I love that, I just want to hear from people, um, Future is like I say, please don't be afraid to get in touch. Even if you yeah. just say, Hey Simon, look, I heard your chat with Dom, it's great. I don't think my website's at the point yet where I can start interviewing impact talent, but I want to say hi and I'll be back in touch in six months. So I love seeing the growth. You know, I remember there was a guy, you know him, Kenny McIntosh. Um, he emailed me when he just had this small little podcast, and now he's running these big tours. So I remember emailing him when I think he had Jericho. So I said, I can't believe, you know, we first spoke all these years ago and you did this small podcast and now look at you and you know I'm really proud so it's great to just hear those stories see how you know so proud of what you've done Dom and what you've achieved Alistair you know all, all these guys I'm just seeing you guys grow a friend of mine called Josh in Manchester um another guy who works incredibly hard and now seeing how well he's doing in his career even though he doesn't do the wrestling journeys as much we still catch up on the other aspects so yeah, man. Yeah, man. Absolutely. And I think just before we finish up, you know, uh, what, while I've got you here, I just want to say, you know, thank you so much for your for your time, your energy, your investment in what we do and also in what other people do. Because, again, that kindness and support, you know, a lot of people come onto these calls and interviews quite nervous. And one of the things that I, I, that I love about you, man, is that you you reassure people, you support oh. others. And that's a huge um, I know that's PR skill and, and, you know, it's a PR skill, but you can't. Like I said, you can't buy that. You can't train that. Your skill, you know, in working with people, you know, second to none, you're so reassuring and supportive of, of, of emerging talent and, and people, you know, that are just trying to trying to achieve their dreams. You've, you've helped me, you know, across the board, so many names, people that I never dreamed I would speak to uh, that I can thank you for that. So thank you so much for your time. And I really appreciate your time today as well. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. It's been brilliant. Thank you. No problem, man. No problem.